Somebody give me a microphone or a megaphone or a telephone. You're gonna clap your hands, gonna wanna dance. Good news, got that old day do, got that joy coming through, got me feeling alright. Good news, got that skip in my step, feel that beat in my chest, got that love in my life. I'm talking good, good news. I got that good, good news. I've been praying for so, so long. everybody how's everybody doing this morning oh that was weak how's everybody doing this morning yeah there we go my name is ryan and i am thrilled to welcome you to ignite this morning i'm joined this morning by uh, miss ellie she hasn't been here in a while, so we're so happy that she's here. Woo! Hey, Ellie. Just got married. We got, she just got married, too. Praise God. Jesus. We got Adia right here next to me. We got uh, Andrea on the keys. We got Derek on the drums. And we got uh, Alex on the guitar. Yeah. And we got Sean on the bass with the shades, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Ignite is a service that welcomes all, so no matter how you identify yourself or others identify you, just know that you are so, so welcome in this space. Ignite is a community of people that believes in good news for all and not bad news for some. Would you all pray with me this morning? Dear God, thank you so, so much for all the gifts that you've given us. God, I pray that you just... Allow your presence to shine in this room. I pray that you open our hearts and our minds as we enter a time of worship. God, we're so, so thankful for your son. We're so thankful for all that you do for us. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand up. We invite you to stand and sing this first song with us, Egypt. Here we go. forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart you found me you freed me held back the waters for my release oh Yahweh sing this out with us you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory hallelujah Torn apart the sea, you 
have led me through the deep hallelujah hallelujah oh. mm. the cloud by day is a sign that you are with me the fire by night is the guiding light to my feet you found me you found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh. Sing out, church. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Sing it out. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have torn apart the seas. You have led me through the Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every voice. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together. I want to see all those hands clapping, church. Let's celebrate the king. Here we go. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. Keep those hands clapping. You marched me out in free. To the promised land. Now I will not forget you. I'll sing of all you've done. Make some noise. Death is swallowed up forever. By the fury of your love, you stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. You marched me out in freedom. Into the promised land. Now I will not forget. Now I will not forget you. I'll sing of all you've done. Oh. Death is swallowed up forever. By the fury of your love. Oh. The God. The God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every voice, here we go. You're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Sing it out, church. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For us, oh, we declare it now. You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by the hand. Put your hands together. You marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you. Oh, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love.
mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Thank you, and please be seated. We are a welcoming congregation, and that means everyone. And so when someone says, hey, I'd like to be a member of this congregation, um, we often ask, what, well, do you know what that means? So I thought I'd tell you all what it meant uh, before we move into the, the baptism and reception of a, new member, a couple of new members. Um, it doesn't mean belong. When you step foot on this campus, you belong, period. Um, and in fact, I, I'll go to the next step. Uh, you're so welcome here. We want you to invite more people just like you. And we want you to bring them, and we want you to make them welcome. When you step forward 
to reaffirm your baptism and to become a member of this congregation, you're claiming ownership of it. You're saying, I will defend this congregation when people uh, speak against it for its welcome. I will be the exception when others turn away and are judgmental of my friends and my neighbors. I will stand firm and I will welcome no matter what. Uh, that, that's, that's what membership means. It also means other things like um, um, I will be intentional about giving uh, to make sure that this congregation continues and thrives so that others can come. Uh, I, I will give so that the next generation coming up can hear and be a part of welcome and belonging. That's, that's what membership means here. And so I want to invite Gabe and Lily to come up and uh, there we go. Come on up. And uh, yeah, well, we didn't. <laughs> I'm going to have you guys stand on the back here. And um, I, I'm actually going to stand here because I'll speak on behalf of the congregation today. Um, actually, they'll join me in, in part of this. But I don't have this all memorized. And I don't think we should memorize it. <laughs> As people of grace, it is through the sacrament of baptism that we celebrate God's creation of all of us, God's claim on all of us. In baptism, we receive as our own blessing the words that God spoke at Jesus' baptism, you are my beloved child with whom I am so very pleased. We pause in this moment to recall baptism as formative in our lives as faithful people to recall our responsibility to one another carried out in membership in this church. I present Gabriel and Lily uh, uh, to affirm their faith, to make a commitment to God in this community of faith, this congregation. And so I have some questions for you. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer yes, we do. Do you put your trust and grace in Jesus and let him be your guide, promising to serve him as part of his church, which is open to all people? Once again, yes. Okay. Will you order your life to be an imitation of Jesus, loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? If so, once again, yes, we will. Will you seek to love your neighbor like you love yourself? Once again, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you this, but I'm also asking you this. Will you be loyal to Christ through this United Methodist congregation and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, once again, we will. Yeah. Will you faithfully carry forward the ministries of this church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and the witness you give? If so, once again, we will. Yeah. Will you nurture one another in a deepening discipleship and include these people in your love and your care? If so, once again. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to say this to you, and your job is to just let us and receive it. Will you join me? We claim you and will surround you with a community of love that all of us may grow in discipleship. We will pray for one another that we may be drawn into the ways of God which lead to life. Gabriel Johnson Stafford, I understand that baptism is in order. We recall baptism as we become members and we have a tradition here in this congregation. Oops, that's not it. <laughs> it involves all of you getting out of your chairs and coming and we stand around and we lay claim to and we put hands on and we reach out and touch the person being baptized or someone who is touching that person and we baptize together. So we crowd in and we'll probably smell each other and that'll be fine, it's summer. And um, if we need room, we make room. And um,
Water. We use water. And baptism means what water means. Water means death. When we descend into water, we die to what we used to be. As we rise out of water, water means life. Water nourishes, water brings life, water gives future. In this moment, we step across the threshold. We let go of what we used to be. And we become. Gabriel, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the creator of us all. May God work in you that having been born of water and spirit, you may be a disciple of Christ. Amen. 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 All right. So now I think we should need to add to the tradition. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> May everyone who has been baptized remember your baptism and give thanks. Members of the household of God, you can stay right here. Don't run off. <laughs> Members of the household of God, I commend to your love and care, Lily and Gabe. I entrust them to you to love as God would have you love. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect their love. May God strengthen you and bless you. And may this church be a part of that blessing. Amen. Thank you. you. We should have one for both of you for membership. We will. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house Arrival's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final, when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final, when the Father's in the room. Burdens down Ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house, yeah. The helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide. The dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Miracles take place. The cynical find faith. The love is breaking through. When the Father's in the room Jericho walls are quaking Strongholds now are shaking Love is breaking through When the Father's in the room Love is breaking through When the Father's in the room Ooh, they are burdens down Check your 
your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house Oh yeah Father's house, yeah. Whoa. Amen. All right, kids, you know what time it is. Come on up to the front. It's your time. Here we go. I'm so Bless God, this heart Sing it with us. in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Got this heart beat in my chest. No, it doesn't matter about the rest. If I got you, Lord, I'm so hey, blessed. Hey. I'm my best day. I'm a child of God. I'm my worst day. I'm a child of God. I know every day is a good day. And you're the reason why hey. I'm my best day. I'm a child of God. I'm my worst day. I'm a child of God. I know every day is a good day. And you're the reason why I'm so glad. <laughs> Brian does that just for us. I love it every time. So I have some friends who were here with me at our 9 o'clock service. So you guys already know the answer to the question, right? So don't shout it out right away, okay? We want the others to have a chance to guess, okay? Right? So I have something on this piece of paper. And I want you to try to guess what it is. It's a living thing. That's your first hint. And it's kind of small. Should I give you more hints, more clues? There's a lot of them outside right now. Flies, no, not flies. Life, it is a living thing. <laughs> no, but it likes to eat plants. Mm, it's, it's an, it's, so those are good, those are, it's not a lizard or a mouse or a bird, it's a type of insect. A bee, no. Closer. Do you guys remember? What is it? A grasshopper. That's right. Thanks for letting everyone have a chance to guess. And they are all over. Do you have them all over by your house right now? You don't? They keep... They are jumping everywhere. They are jumping. You have them at your house? Yep, they're jumping everywhere right now, right? Yeah. And crickets, yeah, there's a lot of animals. So if we look at a grasshopper, and this is a pretty up-close picture, right? There's a lot of things that we have in common with a grasshopper, like physically. What do you see that grasshoppers have that we have too? Eyes? Legs? We have antenna? We have ears, right? Are those kind of like antenna? Yeah? Do they have a mouth? Yeah. So even though... If we share all of those things with grasshoppers, does that mean we're grasshoppers? No. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> no, but we're not. What makes us a little bit different than a grasshopper? We're bigger, yeah. We're stronger. I think they probably still out jump us. We don't eat the same things all the time, right? Grasshoppers eat different things than us? Yeah. We don't, you eat plants sometimes, right? You eat vegetables. Eat you eat broccoli, <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. That's good to eat those nutritious things. But I think, like what Amelia said, sometimes, even though we're big, have you ever had someone tell you you're too little to do something or made you feel small? How did that make you feel when someone said you're too little? What did you think when they said that? No one's ever said that to you? That's awesome. You might feel sad, right? Do you think you'd, you just want to still try to do it, right, and show them that you can? Yeah, and that's awesome. And that's something we want to remember because with God, we can do great big things. 
No one can ever tell us that we're too small or not strong enough to try, right? As long as it's safe. <laughs> That's the children's minister saying, be safe. Yes, so we can always remember that God's with us and helps us to do big things. So let's pray together, friends. Good morning, Jesus. Help us to remember that with you on our side, we can overcome the giants in our lives. Amen. And we can head out to Sunday school or back with your families. Okay, so we have some announcements. Um, Ignite believes in building community amongst its people. Here are a few ways that you can be uh, in our community with each other. So number one, family camp is back, Woohoo! Before um, fall schedules and school starts pulling your family in a million different directions, take some focused time to be together and enjoy God's creation with other PV UMC families for family camp at Mingus Mountain, September 1st through the 3rd. So kids, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grand grandpas, friends, friends who are like family too. Um, all are welcome. So please contact Ben or Chris, Kristen if you need help registering or with the cost of the weekend. We definitely have scholarships available. Um, so number two, ice cream social after worship. So please stick around after worship today to enjoy a cool treat and some fellowship with our community. Um, and then please um, also take some time today to consider how you'd like to support this ministry and mission of this church. If you're a first time visitor, please know that we don't expect you to give. Um, your presence at Ignite is your gift. However, if you consider Ignite and PVUMC your home, your church home, you can give online at pvumc.org slash give now or in the, the welcome baskets. We have uh, baskets you can give your offerings there as well. So would you please take a minute and say hello to someone next to you and um, ask about their days today? If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have doubted you. I wish I could tell my younger self just to have faith. There's so many mountains you have moved, valleys you have led me through. And it's only by your grace I'm standing here today. I'm a witness to your faithfulness in every storm and every step. Looking back, never once did you let me go. And no matter what the future holds, you'll work it for my good. I know you are faithful and I never My life is full of miracles, the stories that I could tell. All that you've had healed, all that you've done, I can't forget. So even if my life doesn't go the way I planned or how I hoped, our history has shown. Oh, you've never failed me yet. I'm a witness to your faithfulness in every storm and every step. Looking back, never once said you let me go. And no matter what the future holds, you'll work it for my good. I know you're faithful and I
Amen, amen. All right, so our scripture reading today is Numbers chapters 13 and 14, some selected verses. The Lord said to Moses, send some of your leaders to explore the land of Canaan. So they went and explored the desert of Zin as far as Rahab. Upon returning, they cried as they tore their clothing, saying, the land does not flow with milk and honey, but this nation devours its own inhabitants. Everyone we saw there was enormous and powerful giants. We were merely grasshoppers to them. We must not engage them in battle, for we will surely be devoured. But Joshua, one of those who had explored the land, did not tear his clothes and said to the people, do not allow fear to cause you to rebel against the way of the Lord, and do not fear the people who have devoured others, for they are no more than bread for us. Their protection is removed. Do not fear them. Amen. 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 Well, there is this thing that happens. We, we've been, um, we are in, we're getting to the end of this series of sermons. We've been talking about loyalty, the importance of loyalty, the importance of having our loyalty in the right place, some of the temptations of being disloyal, what happens when we're disloyal, etc., cetera, et cetera. We're going to pick up on loyalty today, and, and I want to start by telling you this is a huge thematic idea. It's a, it's a huge theme of Scripture. Uh, we, we say, okay, we're Christians. We start in the New Testament. No, we don't. No. And there's nothing new in the New Testament. There's not one thing that happens in the New Testament that isn't connected back to something in the Old Testament. So we're going to start in the Old Testament. We're going to jump to the New Testament today. And it's about loyalty. Uh, there is this thing that happens. There is this thing that happens when people start gathering. They, what happens is that people become friends. And sometimes friendship enables us to say difficult things to one another when difficult things are warranted and need to be said. Sometimes. But not often. Most of the time, friendship becomes a silent agreement that I will never say anything to you that you don't want to hear. means not challenging people, even if, if what they're doing, saying, how they're acting is destructive or, 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 or a problem. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a loyalty thing. This is where loyalty takes over and actually gets in the way Moses would go up on the mountain and have conversations with God. God did most of the talking, sure. And then Moses would come down off the mountain and try to, to let that resonate through the people. And, and the people simply would outright reject him. They would say things to him that were pretty awful that we wouldn't want to hear. And most of it centered around, how can you say that to us? I thought we were friends. Jesus in the New Testament would... Um, uh, go out and pray. Sometimes it'd be just over the ridge. They'd find him behind a rock. Sometimes he would go up on a mountain too. And then he would come down and, and he would attempt to offer um, the, what, what God had been speaking to him. And the people rejected that. They didn't want to hear, aren't, aren't you the son of Joseph and, and Mary? The carpenters? Uh, we, we, uh, and you're speaking that way to, I, I thought we were friends. In our text today, Moses is still the leader of the Israelites. They were the enslaved people. They cried out. God heard them. God sent Moses to rescue them, uh, uh, led them across the, the sea on dry land, and they'd been in the wilderness for an entire generation. Moses is still the leader, but the word is Moses can't be the leader that leads them into the promised land, and there's a reason for that, probably several reasons for that. We might think, well, that's fine, uh, because certain leaders have different abilities, and we need a new skill set as we go into the promised land. And, and this leader is probably tired and needs something new to do and, and all of that. So, so that's the expectation. But, but what about this one? A new leader has no way 
of participating in all of the agreements that form among people about silences. It's, a, it's that friendship problem of, well, we know each other so well, uh, you won't speak difficult words that I don't want to hear to me. It, it becomes a little conspiracy of silence. And um, uh, those agreements that get made, those nods, those head shakes, those handshakes, um, because we're friends. Overlook my inconsistencies because we're friends. Don't, don't challenge me if, if my wording is poor because we're friends. It, it absolutely infuriated the religious authorities when Jesus refused to honor their boys club. They had that kind of a thing going on. They had a little friendship group going on. All these little communities had this, everybody knew their place in the town, the little hierarchy that they had in their community. And when Jesus would come, they'd meet him at the gates and they would walk him into the village and attempt to invite him to lunch and let's be friendly and let's have this prayer group. And Jesus just declined to participate in that. He would sit in somebody's house and still say the challenging words that needed to be said. He refused to honor their inside agreements, their winks and their knowing nods. And he started talking about beware. And he started giving warnings about those little clubs that people form, those little loyalty clubs. This warning didn't just start with Jesus. It, it's a, a, a thematic message of the Old Testament. Give me just a couple examples here. Uh, 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 this is the message of the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea. Hosea was speaking to his community where their focus was, hey, let's all just be friends. And so then, and Hosea says, God's complaint is, there's nobody left among you who can speak the truth. This is a significant portion of the first half of the book of Malachi. This is basically a men's club, religious men's club. And what they were doing to women is atrocious. It, it was a men's club that was trophy wifing. And they were spinning their faith and their sacred texts to make trophy wifing acceptable. And so they cast off their first wife, the mother of their child or children, and they take a new wife and uh, a, a young woman from uh, another land, uh, adventurous and exciting. And um, this is a substantial piece of, of the book of Habakkuk, uh, the, the danger of wrapping treachery and deception and friendly handshakes and winks and nodding and thinking that's going to protect you when things fall apart. That, that, that the other people will let you off the hook because you're friends. That, that's the Old Testament. The New Testament, it, it looks a little bit different. It comes up in the Gospels around Jesus, yes, but it's also quite visible in the early churches. This is, this, this, uh, it shows up in the book of Acts, the sec second half of the book of Acts. It, it counters a lot of this, uh, uh, these friendship groups and what they do to the ministry of the church. They, they redirect it, they, they get it off track. The first and second Timothy, that kind of thinking, that, that, that group loyalty, putting the friendship first, uh, almost destroyed the ministry of Timothy. And so Paul has to write to Timothy and, and get his focus back on God in whose name Timothy had been baptized. Uh, Titus shows up in the book of Titus, shows up in the book of Philippians. It's the challenge of anyone engaged in ministry. The familiarity, winks and nods among people who know each other, distracting and subverting the way of God. And then what happens in the Old Testament, what happens in the New Testament, is that when people who are in tune with the ways of God, look at all of the Old Testament prophets, this is what they encountered. Uh, Isaiah and Hosea and Jeremiah, when one of those prophets, in the New Testament, it was Jesus mostly, but then Paul came along and Peter and, and the others. Um, 
uh, um, um, Mary. Mary spoke against her tradition and the winks and the nods and the handshakes of her community. Um, that, that, what happens is the community hears their words and, and they begin to complain. How can you say that to us? I thought we were friends. Speak words to us that we want to hear. And, and if you, and this complaining, it is, that's what it's called. And, and if you go home today and you read Numbers 13 and 14, uh, you're going to notice that God does not take kindly when people start complaining that God's way doesn't line up with their way. They're making choices. And God says, choose my way. And people say, nope, we want our way first. So you might think that the, the people in the Old Testament, after God has told them to stop complaining for the ninth time, you would think that the people got it and went, oh, maybe I should not moan and groan. Maybe I should work on getting my way in line with God's way. You, you would expect them. Boy, it set God off. God said a couple of times, listen, you asked to be rescued. I rescued you. You didn't have anywhere to go. I'm leading you. You didn't even have food to put in your bellies. I'm providing for you. You didn't know which way to walk. I'm showing you how to walk in my way. You had no future. You begged for a future. I'm leading you into a new future. Walk in this way, the way that leads to life. And yet, all you do is complain about how inconvenienced you are by my way, how much my way doesn't line up with what you're accustomed to. Like my job as your God is to submit. How silly can that be? We need to reverse that process. God does not like complaining. And like I said, you might think the people in the Old Testament got it and stopped complaining, and you would be wrong. And you might think the same thing in the New Testament, that the religious folks, as important as the Exodus experience was in the faith of the New Testament religious folks, you might expect that those religious people heard that and, and didn't complain against Jesus when he spoke to them words they didn't want to hear. And you would think that you would be wrong. In fact, the more Jesus called them to God's way, not their own way, the angrier they got, the more they plotted against him. What this tells us, I think, I think what this tells us is this is something of a human behavior. And uh, I'll tell you, in the Old Testament, this is God's complaint against many nations, not just, not just the, the Hebrew community, uh, uh, that wrapping of self-serving injustice and discrimination, the, the writing of laws that benefit me and my friends at the expense of, well, you know, those people. If they just knew their place, if they would just stay in their place, we wouldn't have this problem because my friends and I, we, us, wink, wink, nod, nod, handshake, we're in charge. It's how oppression gets systematized. It's, and oppression gets God's attention. And the, the Old Testament is just painfully clear. This is the reason that the northern kingdom fell. Uh, Israel was two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was Israel. The southern kingdom was Judah. Israel fell for this very reason. Handshakes, winks, and nods. We on the inside, well, sorry for you on the outside. Yeah, all of that. God says to Jeremiah about the northern kingdom, from the least to the greatest, everyone is greedy for gain. People claim to be prophets and representatives of my ways. They wrap themselves in robes of holiness and yet they practice deceit. They stand together plotting to steal from the poor. They have no shame 
at all. They stand before the congregation and speak to the people with words of deception, and they don't even know how to blush. This is the thematic message of the ministry of Jesus. It's what he's against from the beginning of his ministry to the end of his ministry. This kind of club thinking, the insider group, the boys club, the folks with power, the folks with resources. Jesus says it this way. He says, beware those who use the law on others. They like to paint other people as sinners outside of God's love. They like to walk around in flowing robes. They love to be greeted in public places with, with respect. They love to make a big show of their piety and their holiness. They take the most important seats in worship. They are awarded the highest seats of honor at banquets. They stand before the congregation. They put on their praying voice and they pray beautiful prayers. And yet they use the law to devour the houses of widows and cause the widows to be left destitute. You may be wondering, so what does Jesus offer as an alternative for us? Well, Jesus kept doing this one thing. It's something we can do. Moses did it too. Jesus had this habit of disappearing. You'd, you'd be talking to him and you'd say, he's right there. You'd look away and he'd be gone. And, and they would find him. He'd be just over the ridge behind a rock on his knees and praying. They, they'd find him up the hill, just in a grove of trees, and he would be murmuring. And when he came out of those places of prayer, not only was being around him healing, but he was unswervingly focused on God's way. Beware the trappings of familiar winks and nods and handshakes. Jesus calls it, the easy road, the wide, it's the road to destruction. He says, walk the difficult path. Be first in your commitment to God's ways. One day, one of the disciples notices Jesus coming out of his place of prayer. And he says, Jesus, teach me to do what you do when you're alone. Teach us to do what you do. We, we want to do it. it, it you're incredibly healing and and you stay so focused. What do you do when you're alone? And so Jesus begins to answer him. He says, well, the first thing is, uh, you've seen people, religious folk, who put on airs. Yeah, don't do that. Don't make a public display of your faith. Don't, don't if, if you're fasting as a sign of your commitment to, to God, don't get all morose. Don't make a scene out of yourself. Just go about your day and be pious in the eyes of God. Be authentic in what you're doing. Uh, this, this disciple had figured out that what Jesus does in private was more important than what Jesus did in public. And what Jesus did in public came out directly from what Jesus did in private. Jesus goes on, he says, trying to impress other people it, it doesn't help. When you're going to help someone, don't think about how it looks. Don't do something for someone because you're performing for them. You've seen people treat holiness as a recital. Act compassionate and don't worry about who's watching. Jesus said, he goes on and he gets kind of, well, we'll say mean. This is a good word, mean. Jesus says the world is full of self-identified prayer warriors who control others by peddling formulas and techniques to get what they want from God. And they sell that wink and that nod and that handshake as holy. Jesus says all of that performing is nonsense. God doesn't buy any of it. God sees what's in your heart, what you do when it's just 
you. And then Jesus starts talking about prayer. He says, when you pray, don't do it in front of other people. That's performance. And praying as a performance doesn't fool anybody, especially God. Get into a quiet place where it's just you so you won't be tempted to try to impress other people. Jesus goes on, he says, what you'll notice as you pray is you're going to get it all out and you're going to notice a shift from what you bring to what God brings to that conversation. You need God provides. Your way has brought you here. God's way takes over. The focus shifts from us to God. God's grasp on us, God's love on us. We begin to sense that we're overwhelmed. Jesus isn't done. He's about to tell us how to pray. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. We end today with this benediction. May the Spirit of God, whom we see and follow in the person of Jesus, Go before you to show you the way, behind you to nudge you forward when you're too scared to move on your own, above you to watch over you, beside you to be sometimes the only friend you've got. Go always in the peace of Christ.